Hi everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday. It's actually a Studio Friday for us because we're leaving town in the morning. Yeah, we are. And, but we're gonna say Studio Sunday anyway. Okay, yeah, because... Oh, it's early on Sunday morning, I'm tired. <laughs> it's very <laughs> early, it's like 30 hours early. <laughs> anyway, happy Passover and happy Easter to all those who celebrate those holidays. And happy weekend to those of you who are enjoying this beautiful spring weekend. Nice. We've had a crazy couple of weeks with Terry Moore Live and South Carolina Comic Con and getting out all those pre-orders for the limited edition serial omnibus. Mm -hmm. Which you dodged a big bullet with that. How so? Mr. Moore. Why? Because you were doing Studio Sunday during a lot of that. Yeah, I was. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, huh, really funny. Yeah, somebody else had to go move all that stuff. Uh-huh, guess who that was? Um, our vast team of... <laughs> professional workers it was lots of work lots of fun and very successful we thank everyone that um, participated in both weekends and made it such a great experience for us it's so fun to get to see everybody's name pop up on the screen and kind of get to interact for a minute we're really learning our core group who they are um, okay first let's talk about Terry Moore live we had so much fun seeing everyone it's been six months since we actually kind of interacted. Mm -hmm. um, so that was so fun. Yeah. And it really is kind of like a convention for us. Yeah, because again, we recognize, you know, yeah. like 200 different names that we interact with all the time and to have a live chat. It was like a big yeah, Zoom call. It was like we were touching base with him. So mm -hmm. that was a lot of fun. It was good. Well, we saw lots of art and sketches and books mm -hmm. and and just a, um, about everyone should have their stuff by now. Yeah. Maybe some of the international books are still heading out there, but everything is, is shipped. So you should have tracking and you should at least know where it is. I heard from one guy on Twitter who said, my book hasn't arrived. And then he tweeted back like an hour later and said, oh, my neighbor has it. <laughs> <laughs> so check your neighbor if you don't have it. Yeah. A big thanks to Mike, who helps us coordinate all of the shipping and oversees the warehouse operations for us, which is a lifesaver. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We couldn't do it without him. And we were able to donate $1,500 to the World Central Kitchen during the Terry Moore Live weekend. Uh, thanks to everybody who purchased sketches during that sale. Mm -hmm. So that was wonderful. We had four sketches that were, uh, you know, piece. Kind of piece. And, yeah. uh, and those went straight to the kitchen at $1,500. Jose Andres is the chef who started this, and he really is an angel on earth. Um, he serves millions of meals to people who are in need of food, and he's serving Ukraine and all the countries where the uh, refugees are headed. Uh, he's hot meals three times a day. So just unbelievable. Wow. So, um, they go, and they just don't go there. They go wherever they're needed. They go all over the world. So if there's a hurricane or an earthquake or whatever, they're, they're also. So wherever they are, wherever there's a need, they go. So keep that in mind if you um, want to make a donation to, to a great cause. Okay. Great. Okay. On to South Carolina Comic Con. Yes. We were a bit apprehensive heading out there because it was our first convention back. But it went beautifully, Impossible. and Rob and Michelle, who um, are the promoters of the convention, were so kind and just did a great job. Yes. Uh, they were amazing hosts. They really know how to treat their guests, and all of the attendees were so nice and seemed to have just a, a wonderful time. I think people were just glad to be out. Yes. <laughs> you know, people go to a Comic-Con anyway because they want to be there, but this was especially lively and, and yeah. cheerful. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think everybody's ready to go out and see other people. and reconnect well and we got to see some old friends and we got to put faces to names uh meet people we'd never met before but mm -hmm. we knew who they were jen and her crew were there and um yeah. erica was there and uh -huh. who we met for the first time and gonzo mm -hmm. thank you guys so much for coming out and lisette with a big uh, uh -huh. collection so thank you so phew we made it <laughs> first one down we're still standing i know we did it Ooh. all is well okay so now on san diego San Diego Comic Con in July. Okay, so what's the news on that? Are we going to San Diego for sure? We are. All right. So we're going to have a usual spot. We will. Okay, and we're going to have 
the serial omnibus and should, will we have our new sketchbook? I hope we do. This I'm working on it right here. That's why I'm at the computer, the 2022 yeah. sketchbook. Yeah, that's the plan. All right. And I'm hoping that we also have number one of your new series coming out. Yeah. So That'd lots of fun, tight. exciting Sorry. things happening. Okay, okay. Um, you've In fact, you've spent the morning putting together the 2022 sketchbook that mm -hmm. should be available at the end of June, the beginning of July. Uh, we're doing a hardcover that's only available through us, and it, I hate to say this, but it's going to be very limited because they have a paper issue yeah. um, at the printer. Yeah. So um, we'll let you know when that hardcover is going to be um, available. It's only available through us. The retail version will be soft cover. Again, there's this paper issue going on. Right. Uh, anyway, it goes to the printer on Monday, mm -hmm. and then you'll get right onto your new series. Yeah, I can't wait. And I've already done the covers to the new series, so I'm already there. I can't wait for them to see the covers. I really like them. Yeah. I think it's going to be it's going to be a fun series. We say covers because there's going to be a main cover and a, a variant cover. We're doing a retail cover and a variant cover, and the retailers have the opportunity to get the variant as well. Mm -hmm. So um, ask your retailer about that if you're interested. We will have them both available on our site as well. Um, and uh, starting May 1st, we'll start accepting the 10 issue subscriptions for it. Um, I've been asked about that. And we'll take them up until the, the uh, issue actually goes to the printer, which will be in early July. So, um, so that's your window to subscribe yeah. to the series. So you've got about eight weeks to subscribe if you want to. It's 10 issues, which is how long the series is going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you want it delivered to your house, or your work, or your P.O. box, or your neighbor's house. Anything okay. stationary, not your car on the You've freeway. You've got a couple of months to order it. Okay. Man, I think that's all I've got today. You have to be able to know to catch that window. Yeah, you do. So, you know. Yeah. And one last thing, we're doing this um, collaboration with Humble Bundle, who bundles typically video games together and uh, sells them on their site. Mm -hmm. And a portion of that money goes to charity. Anyway, they approached us about doing your catalog. And so you can get your entire catalog on Humble Bundle. It's in PDF format. And I think it's 30 or $35 for the entire catalog, mm -hmm. beginning to end. And uh, I think you can order that for two more weeks. Humblebundle.com. And our charity is Heroes Initiative, and we have raised over eleven thousand dollars for them. So far, and we have two more weeks to go. Two more weeks to go. So be sure you go and check that out if you ever want to see Terry's work. You can buy different levels, uh, but to get the whole catalog, I think it's thirty dollars. If you want to try it out, I think it's like five. Like the first, you get like four books. Yeah, uh, try everything's in trade format. Now, shouldn't this be costing like seven hundred and seventy-one dollars for forty-five? It's books? actually supposed to cost seven hundred seventeen dollars. Seven hundred seventeen dollars. Yeah, 45 so books. it's a great deal, yeah, it is. and uh, and it's a such a worthy cause, Heroes Initiative, and uh, so we want to do all we can to help them out. So go to Humble Bundle. You've got two more weeks to uh, purchase that, and um, so go do that and make everyone happy. For a very good cause yeah. and on a technical note the what you're getting is the first generation pdfs made from my computer file so and they're not tethered to an app they're pdfs you can use them on any screen and it's the same beautiful image that i see when i'm working on my computer which i've always thought was the prettiest way to see it so check that out very and and help out heroes initiative yeah so um that's, that's it for me today that's a lot man yeah you have a lot going on, honey. <laughs> I do. Do you have anything to add? <laughs> no, nothing going on over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then let's get on the hot seat. Oh. Hey, we haven't even mentioned about you being over here at your yeah. desk. Yeah, uh, the drawing table's right here. And then we're at, I'm at the computer today because I'm putting together, you know, the 2022 version of a sketchbook. And this is what's last year's hardcover. I'm putting this together right now on the... So here's where I'm working today. Okay. Well, um, this first question is from our friend Erica. Okay. If Terry had had better luck with the cartooning, would Kachu and Francine still have stories still have been told? Not like it was in comics. I mean, you couldn't do that in comic strips. 
I guess it would have been more uh, slapstick kind of comedy. Yeah. The, uh, I wonder if I would have found my way and, and done some, found some new way to stay between, you know, drama and comedy. I don't know. It, maybe not. And maybe people wouldn't be interested in it. I don't think I could. I don't know. Back in that time. I don't know. Apartment 3G. Apartment 3G. I'd have to be so, everything would have to be so subtle, you know, because it's the family newspaper. So I couldn't have had the freedom that I had in comics. Right. I felt so liberated when I went to comics. You could do anything you want. Well, and you didn't even have a company telling you what you could and couldn't do mm -hmm. until I came on the scene. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I slapped you around a little bit. Actually, Robin uh, many times is uh, more uh, brave than I am. You know, she's always telling me to, you know, spice it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Terry. Country. Come on, what are you doing? <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know. I guess we would have figured it out, Erica, but I can't imagine it being the story it is now. No, it wouldn't have had the depth. Yeah, it would have been a, a, a very long period of... Or, and it could have lasted two months. <laughs> or, yeah, I would have been canceled. Yeah, the Kansas City Star would have thrown me right out. Uh, yeah, that was another business. That was not meant to be. That just wasn't meant to be. No, it wasn't. That's like saying, if you'd gone into opera, do you think you would have sung Kachu's song in opera? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, the second part of, there's her second question is, are you still a Linda Ronstadt fan? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I am. A, a lot of the music stood the test of time, but I'm very selective. I don't like all of it. I just like the really, really clever, beautiful songs that have... Um, you don't really like her bad songs? I don't like the bad songs. <laughs> You don't like the ones that were bad. <laughs> like there were always like two songs out of each album that really popped. And so through, all, through the whole catalog, I probably have 12 songs that I really think stood the test of time that are not dated and they're just timeless. And what a voice. So a real voice, you know, with them. That's oh, rare. Okay, well, that's it for me. I'm going to go stand by the window and wait for the Easter Bunny to come. I hope he's bringing me something. <laughs> I hope he doesn't uh, get caught in the sprinklers. <laughs> yeah, that last time, I think that ran him off. Okay, so what are you doing today? I really am uh, assembling the 2022 sketchbook, and I'm doing it on Adobe InDesign. So if you want to spend a few minutes and look over my shoulder, I'll show you how I actually go from strong board. What happens over here at the computer when I actually have it all scanned and ready to put into... A, a ready to print file. Okay. Not everybody knows that, I guess. So Go it might for be it. worthwhile looking at it. All okay. right. So meet, thank you, honey. <laughs> meet me right here. Okay. Okay, so this is what I'm making is a 120 page book um, that this is last year's. Actually, this one's 108 pages. Wow, the, the new one's bigger. Um, this is last year's book. And it's a nice saddle stitch, uh, square bound, hard cover. Um, and this one, you'll notice that there's no number back here uh, because this was never for retail. It was uh, only sold through our website, which means, I guess, I could have put, you know, superhero sketches in there since it wasn't for retail. Uh, I do a lot of, you know, goofy superhero stuff, too, on the side just for fun but um, I didn't put them in there. It's just all my characters. Um, that's what I'm making now is a 2022 version. And my uh, I'm working on Adobe InDesign. And what I do is I will take my, you've seen the sketches, I'll take them and I'll scan them over here on the scanner right there. And then I get them onto Photoshop. And in Photoshop, say, let's look at this one here. Um, it, you know, I have them all cleaned up and the only thing I do in Photoshop really is just check to make sure that um, the contrast is good. This one's already been set. If you go too low, it looks like it's, you know, goofy charcoal drawing. Um, so this is where I have it set right now. I could go a touch darker, but you never know how the printer ink is gonna be. So maybe I'll go right there. And you can also uh, blast out the whites and all that if you're trying to make stuff like smudges go away. But if it gets too bad on a smudge, you just need to get out your pen and your Wacom tablet and start 
you know, getting rid of it by hand. Um, you don't want to mess up the quality of the drawing. So, save that. Um, and I have an old version of Photoshop who won't do that for me, so I have to uh, put a new title on it. I just added an X at the end of the title, and it'll save it for me. That's going to change when I, I have to get the new computer, and then I'll have to go on the Adobe Photoshop. Um, let's get rid of that one. Now we're going to use the X. So this is the one before I showed it to you, and this is the one after I showed it to you, the X one. And you can actually just drag it straight over into INDD, and there it is in its real size. Um, I have, I can zoom all this up for you. And what I do is I uh, shift move the corners. If I do shift, it keeps the uh, ratio right. Uh, it doesn't change the ratio. And then do control click, and you can go fit content proportionally, and it resizes into the uh, smaller frame that you just did. And I'm not looking at the frame now. All I look at is the image and lining up the goal post in between. Oops, sorry, I bumped you. Um, the purple line is uh, everything inside there is title safe. And then everything on the black line is paper edge. So right there is the paper edge. The red line is a quarter inch bleed, uh, a one eighth inch bleed, sorry. Um, so I could go off the page and that's as far as I need to go in order to make sure that there's no cutoff on the outside line of the page. Same on the inside right there. Um, if I go out too far, you, let's see how far do I have to go. Right there is the edge of the page. So I'm pulling it into, uh, where the bleed is. And on these guys, I can't, I don't have enough. Um, height on the picture to do that. You have to use the real art that you have. You can't just make the make up new art at the at this stage. So get it about right there. And now it's going to bleed off the left and the right, and it's cropped on the top and the bottom of the page. So you really will see this white space on the page, and then this white space down here. Um, the page numbers are already on a layer that's sitting on top of anything you put on it. And I accomplished that uh, if you click on pages on your menu selector in here. Uh, whoops, that's properties. There's pages. And you have a master page here. Um, the master page has automatic numbering on it. And it's on a layer, a second layer, that sits on top of the art that you're putting down. So that's how I do that. And um, just so you see it, there is the title safe right there. And then there, the white edge right there is the actual the edge of the cutoff edge of the book. But you can't put something there without it being in danger of not having the, enough image. So if you want something at the very edge of the book, what you really want to do is not go right there. You have to go all the way out to the bleed cutoff and then let the printer cut it off. And that's how you make sure you get something all the way to the edge of the page. So um, what I've done is make sure that I have an image that's going out to the bleed, to the red line. So it's going to bleed off if I want. The only reason I'm messing with that is because the flag goes out here. So my alternative would be to pull it right to the flag and then the right side Pull it in to about right there so that it's sort of in sync with the goalpost. And then recenter it like that. That's probably better, huh? And then all of these have my signature on them. I'm really debating whether I should open these up and edit them out in Photoshop. Um, and when I do that, you just get out the, uh, the pen and you do um, the stamp the rubber stamp so you copy the rubber stamp here and then you go over here and it would mark all that off uh, i'm debating doing that i don't know if i need to actually so i'm on page 30 59 here and for page 60 i've already put this in it's the uh wide beach scene where i uh flipped the page sideways and did this in a this ratio so that's my center fold for the book. So I put it on 60 because obviously that's halfway through. 
and that's what I'm doing. Um, this is what I have so far. Um, that's the page I'm supposed to sign on or whatever. And then I did all my legal in the title page. And here are the images that I have so far. I'm going to run this because it's, I don't think I can get in trouble because they already put this in a movie. <laughs> Although I don't know. Robin may not let that go. So we'll find out. Um, but some Jet and Earl and Motor Girl and Kixie, um, Kachu and Francine. Uh, some couple of pictures, coupling, and David, and Darcy, and uh, <laughs> cosplay gone bad. That's a bad day for cosplay there for Casey. Um, Casey loves her boobs, by the way. She loves showing them off. Um, and then we have Rachel from Rachel Rising, Motor Girl again. I really like this one. He looks, I think he looks really good right there. Is that wrong for me to say that? I like that one. Um, <laughs> and then little Zoe arguing with uh, Malice, um, who's now masquerading as a priest, which is about as Halloween as you can get. Um, can be the gang, the serial killer, Rachel. So that's just the kind of thing that's going to be in the 2022 sketchbook. All new sketches that I've done uh, just in the last four or five months. Um, you're wondering how that's possible. I did, what is this, 83 sketches for the last art sale um, that happened in April. So that's all 83 sketches. If it has a red dot in it, it's already in the book. These are the ones, the ones that don't have a red dot means they're not in the book yet. And then uh, before that, over the winter, I already had 100 sketches uh, where I was trying to do 100 for um, another event. So, um, yeah, I have a lot to choose from. It's not a problem. <laughs> so, um, oh, this was for the October sale. But, yeah, I have, a, that's what I'm up to today. And as you can tell, I'm about halfway through and I already have my covers made. Um, so I'm going to put it all together and turn it in on Monday. And then it's up to the printer and we'll see how fast they can print this. You know, everything's crazy right now with the paper prices and the trucking. So this isn't coming out until much later, but I have to get it now and turn it in now um, because of everything going on in the world. So I turned it in, crossed my fingers. Hopefully you guys have it in your hands in a, in a few months. That's what I'm up to once I finish drawing this stuff. That's how I get it to the printer. See you guys. Have a good week.